All right, so this is going to be a purely opinionated YouTube video, no facts, just me projecting what I think needs to happen. So anyway, Pogacar is obviously in the lead by 39 seconds, then 1 minute 17 to Garrett Thomas, 125 Adam Yates, and then everyone else is sort of irrelevant, Gaudu 138. But if we think about the time trial, excluding Vingegaard, um, maybe Thomas, you know, he's he's probably got another two minutes than everyone else. So the question is, how can you beat Tadej Pogacar? Now, I was talking to my friend earlier, and there's a couple of theories that I think I think could happen. So number one is is this stage here. You might say, why this stage? Well, there's 600 meters here, over 2,000 meters up to the Glibier, and almost 400 meters over 2,000 meters here as well. Is Poggy that good at altitude? I'm not sure. The issue is Ineos have la la lost Martinez, therefore I don't think it's great. The plan would be whack it on Lassie de Montvernier. It's got outrageous amount of hairpins, so if you, as soon as you start to drift back a little bit, um, you're in big trouble. Try and get rid of Poggy's teammates and then start firing people across in, in the uh, in the valley. You know, for instance, Pidcock or Yates and try and get Roglic in there as well for Jumbo and then basically cause chaos that way. Now, I think it is a good idea, right? Because basically, I don't think Poggy can chase everything on his own. But I think if you try and do this on the climbs, Poggy is strong enough to do it. But I think on the flat, with the drafting, everyone can just one-two him to death. And if he has no teammates, it's definitely possible. I think the issue you have with that is that other teams will be annoying, like FDJ will miss out, they'll chase, etc. People don't ever race as you expect them to race. So I think that's not the best idea. Uh, I think the Telegraph is not too hard of a climb. 12k, 7%, you get a good sit. This long valley, the Col de Lautere, but the opposite way around, obviously, that is a terrible climb. Uh, it's sort of, well, it's, it's terrible or good, depending. But if people want to chase, it's easy to get bring back. Having said that, if Poggy's isolated against three or four people swapping turns, he'll find it really hard. And then the Granon is that. But I think they shouldn't, Ineos, Yumbo, shouldn't concentrate on this stage. I think it would be a mistake. I think that what they should do is just hard pace on Galibier, trying to, you know, see is Poggy bad at altitude, and then Granon just throw the kitchen sink at him and see what happens. Now, I think, I think what's better to do is some of these other stages. Now, for example, like stage 13, you might look at it and say, okay, well, you know, why would this be a good stage? It looks like a breakaway. It's going to send Etienne. It's after the hours. The reason I think it is, is because UAE don't really try and control the stage. They let other teams do it. And if we saw earlier on the stage along we at one point, Poggy did make the split, but other GC contenders didn't. And it just went. Now, if you think about some of the, the infamous raids of Contador and Quintana in Vuelta, for example, that was huge. And the Fuente D, which was, I believe, uh, Contador and Rodriguez. These are the sort of things that I think can happen to UAE. I think transition stages, which are really hard from the off, like maybe a tailwind, a tailwind would be good. Like this again, 5.7K at 5.5%. If you go full up here, you know, put Pogacar's teammates in difficulty and get a group slipping away. It's up and down all day. It's really hard to chase. It's one of those ones where you think it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be important, but it just could be. And it finished in probably on the Mond Aerodrome, which is the one where Steve Cummings won. And again, that climb is decently hard. And I think this is something where if you've got Yumbo and Ineos with three or four domestiques and like Pidcock or Yates and then hopefully Roglic for Yumbo in there, they can cause chaos. Because once you're, you know, three, four, you know, once you're more like not three, four minutes, maybe 30, 40 seconds, Yumbo Ineos going full at the front. You know, let's say you've got a split of 30 riders, 20 riders versus UAE. UAE don't have the firepower to bring that back. Even if they relied on other teams, which I don't think, other teams would help that much straight away because they'd be like you're the race lead as soon as it goes out to a minute let's say they've been chasing for 10 minutes full then they're going to explode and then the big time gaps go if you remember Froome that's exactly what happened like Froome was caught out napping in that stage and then basically after that his team chased as hard as they could for like 10-15 minutes and then they just blew up and had no more legs and I think you want to do that before the Pyrenees if you look at stage 16 like this is a classic poggy stage like 12k 7%, 9k 8%, and then downhill. Like he's just not losing time. And I think you've got to do it tactically because what's his worst part is his team. Now I want to move on to the next part, which I think is the biggest error, which we saw um the other day. And it's why teams are helping UAE to pace. Like I get you want Wout to win, but come on. If you want to win this tour, you're up against, I would say, the best GC rider in recent history by a long way like complete all-round rider he's unbelievable and you're gonna help Wout win a stupid stage like yeah okay cool Wout wins the stage but Wout's won enough stages Wout's got green 
You either care about winning it or you don't. And if you care about winning it, you have to bin off WoW. You have to go all in. How are we going to beat Poggy? Every day, ruin his team. Every day, make it as hard as him. Like, you might be like four seconds. It's not that deep. But I don't think it's the four seconds. I think it's the, it's the pacing all round, uh, which is not needed. And you can see, like, it's just, it, it's just very tiring to pace all day. Okay, you say, oh, it's not only Nehant Van Hoynal. But it could have been UA's whole team. I think there's got to be more chaos. I think you've got to, you know, put people who are dangerous in breaks and then try and just really upset UAE. And I think that's the way you do it. Because if you leave it too late on mountain finishes, like, you know, Poggy's strong enough that you can one to him on a climb and he could just bin you both. While I think on the flat, obviously, the rolling stages, there comes a point where if you're riding 50k an hour, like, he is strong, but he's not closing a minute gap on his own. Like, it just doesn't matter. And his teammate it can't either because they're so they're so weak. Um, but anyway, I think what also could define it is COVID. Who tests positive? That would be a big thing because Stark and Langen's gone. A lot of teams aren't doing any testing until the rest day. So rest day could be some big casualties and that might really shape the race. Obviously, that's very unfortunate and hopefully it doesn't impact the race. But I think in reality, that will be the case. So anyway, those are my thoughts on how to beat uh, Pogaccia, I think it's really hard. I don't think it's easy, and I think it has to require a whole team effort. Been off well for green. Who cares about green? Green is irrelevant. I honestly think no one is like, oh, who won green? It's like, who won the overall? And that is the only thing they should care about. He's going to win green because all the sprinters are going to OTL on any of the half mountain finishes because they're all not very good at climbing. Jakobsen cannot climb. Ewan can't really climb. So maybe Matthews, but Wout can batter him in the Champs Elysees sprint and secure it there anyway. But yeah, that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? How can you beat Tade Pogaccia? Can you beat him in the mountains or do you have to just try and exploit his team as much as possible? Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.